Hello, I'm Jordan Midler and welcome to RadgeQuit, a show about video games. This week is a show about video game advertising. Advertising is the method of using ridiculously opulent mini-movies to shake the money directly from your pockets. In the mainstream, adverts for things like deodorant or cars or bloody cars again basically boil down to buy this thing and someone will shag you. But when it comes to games, it's not good enough just to show a bit of mountain or a few lassies distracting a gardener into sending sharp metal across a field like a bomb. While you can show off what a car looks like and you can make a movie trailer that gets across the tone of this two hour thing in two minutes, how on earth are you meant to show off a game that could last up to 100 hours in the time it takes someone to click skip ad? Well, in the mid-2000s, companies decided that they were going to get so weird that they had no choice but to pay attention. Take this Sony commercial from the PlayStation 3 that stars a young Phil Mitchell. Not only does it tell you practically nothing about what games you can play on it, it doesn't even make mention of what it is. It could be a sandwich maker for all the people that would stumble across it on ITV9 at 5 in the morning would know. Weirdly, this was actually a teaser for Death Stranding, a full 10 years before the game was even announced. Sony's always been a bit off when marketing their console. While it's been well documented that the PlayStation 1 was aimed at clubbers who were so changed off their Shatner's bassoon that they couldn't even spell PlayStation, you wouldn't need a degree in marketing to work that out. Take a look at this advert called Mental Wealth. Not only have they used special effects to make this poor girl look like your reflection in the subclub toilets, Mankind went to the moon. I don't even know where Grimsby is. Wait, she's Scottish? Oh, very good. We don't have enough characters to count on one hand, but as soon as you need someone to whack the funhouse effects on, it's our turn. Cheers. Later in the PS3 era, when they had got out of their edgy face and decided it might be a good idea to actually sell a few consoles, they started making adverts starring Kevin Butler, the smiley face of corporate capitalism that was down with the gamers in a way that was eerily reminiscent of Hillary Clinton asking voters to Pokemon Go to the polls. Thankfully, their recent efforts have been quite subdued thanks to this genuinely touching 20 years of play campaign showing the history of two decades worth of ignoring the outside world for much better things to do. Nintendo has been doing this longer than anyone and as such have run the gamut of advertising strategy from depicting the dark future where the whole world screams Mario to paying a series of celebs so disconnected from games that they might as well be Martian to pretend they're enjoying a wanking simulator or whatever it is a band that I'm told is called Julius is doing in this clip. Although, Nintendo may be the only company to have an ad featuring a celebrity that doesn't make me want to vomit. A commercial for the 3DS remake of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time features the late, great Robin Williams delivering a loving tribute to the princess and by extension his daughter, Zelda. Are you mixing me up with the princess again? Hard to say, you're both pretty magical. <laughs> it's genuinely quite hard to watch now and I cried while researching this video because above all I am a consumerist whore so I'm not going to take the piss and you can't make me. Nintendo are the masters of making adverts that just made the floods of ugly tears. Honestly, all the videos produced for the Pokemon anniversary was like being exposed to tear gas for hours at a time. And I know it's ridiculous, it's one step away from the people that cry at John Lewis adverts, but I think it's because games are still new compared to other media, and since they're the art form that I love above everything else, when I see them celebrated like that, it bypasses the horrible crust around my brain, and I'm back to being 8 years old, getting scammed out of my Mewtwo. Although Nintendo really do need to stop insisting that every moment of life is better enjoyed with the absolute burks they fill their Switch adverts with. If anyone was to invite me to a rooftop party, I would beg that it was with a view to throwing me off the top. The kind of video game ads that I like are the ones that barely show the game, but instead go for more of a tone piece, like the amazing CGI trailers Blizzard have been putting out for years. We're going to see the game being played a million times before release. These give the games a sense of scale and hype that even the most jaded can't ignore. While a lot of them follow the typical formula of a movie trailer, games have been the home of some of the best adverts in the history of media, and if you're a total nerd like me, you've probably been waiting for this one, because there has literally never been a better one. What makes this trailer so iconic is that it makes the world seem so much bigger than it actually is that beyond the boundaries of the maps there is a much bigger fight going on. Sure, there are only a certain number of NPCs fighting alongside you on any one level, but they're part of an army of millions. What makes the choice to use action figures so appropriate is that it mirrors the way that you'd play out massive wars with your figures, even though you'd just have to imagine that there was an army of 3000 clone troopers, unless you were some oil tycoon's son. It's a piece of art that deserves all the attention it gets and more. It says more about the tone the game is trying to convey than most entire games do. I mean, try to watch this thing without either getting chills or being overwhelmed with nostalgia for a decade ago when all that mattered was you, your pals, and finishing the fight. 
So yes, gaming adverts can be weird. They can be cringy and they can look like the type of garbage I was forced to watch during my film degree, but they can also be moving, exciting, powerful, and most of all, make a game bigger than it is. Thanks for watching. Do you have a favourite gaming advert or one that's so bad that it's good? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to BBC The Social Gaming. And until next time, I'm Jordan Midler. See you later.